Good morning. morning. Well, we have a packed, packed bulletin here uh, this morning. And so um, I am not going to anywhere near lift up all of these announcements. Uh, But I will say, read your bulletin. Everybody say, "Read read your bulletin. Read your bulletin. Read your bulletin. Read your bulletin. There is a lot going on. Uh, I do want to lift up our Habitat for Humanity uh, soup and sandwich lunch, uh, which uh, is going on now as we speak. Uh, and so um, you can help yourselves to, uh, to lunch after worship if you'd like. Uh, we do have some giving opportunities, of course, during the season of Lent. Several of them are Lent and offering, which you'll find information about that in the back of your back of the sanctuary as well. Uh, at, up for Sunday, which of course normally up for Sunday, as is this year, uh, is uh, to provide for the administrative expenses of the United Methodist Community on Relief. That's what up for stands for. Uh, and then, uh, in addition to that, I'd like to lift up that we are also accepting offering for Ukraine, and you can mark that accordingly. Uh, and then our uh, high rise project, our own church project, high rise UMC in Nairobi. Uh, with the match, we are over three quarters of the way to that first $8,000 ask uh, for high rise. And so your generosity is appreciated. Um, but beyond that, I'm, and, and I, I say that because we're not trying to wring more money out of you. Uh, we would like to, you to give to these things as you feel led and as you feel able uh, to do so. But we do want to offer them to you as opportunities for you to um, to participate in those things financially. Uh, and I'm going to dispense with the rest of the announcements because I have something even more fun to do during this time, uh, and that is to recognize our, our service here at the church. Um, Toward the end of last year, the beginning of, of uh, toward the end of last year, the beginning of this year, uh, the, our church council and our staff uh, wanted to put something together as a Sunday to recognize uh, those who serve in our church in in various capacities. You'll find a pink uh, insert in your bulletin, which I will tell you, uh, we know we miss some folks. Uh, we know we miss some folks just because there's there's too much going on around here and too many people doing things uh, for us to even uh, make a, a well-intentioned stab at including everybody. Uh, but we did try to hit some high spots. And we want to recognize our leaders and servants here at Wesley, especially as we're coming out of a pandemic as we celebrate ministries. We want to also celebrate our ministers. Our ministers are all of you. Um, to, to as their as their service and hopefully uh, re-energize uh, today. So, uh, just just as a simple way of recognizing recognizing us, I'm going to call out some areas of service. If you if you are involved or have recently been involved in those areas of service, I'm going to invite you to stand and remain standing. I'm going to call them off fairly quickly so you have to pay attention. So I'm going to ask you to stand and remain standing if you're involved in these areas of service or have been recently. Uh, First of all, our church council, members of our church council, I'll invite you to stand, our board of trustees, our finance committee, our nomination committee, our staff parish relations committee. Uh, These are the kind of uh, administrative leaders uh, of of the church. And now we'll move on to some of our, our ministry areas, our education committee, including Sunday school and small group leaders. Um, missions committee, which some of them may be downstairs, our hospitality and outreach committee, uh, and then I'm going to ask our, our um, those who help with our funeral dinners or our, our, our events here at the church, those who help in, in the kitchen, bring food, serve food, uh, those involved with our music ministry, chancel choir, bell choir, children's choir, youth choir, uh, celebration band, our musicians, uh, eight o'clock service musicians, cantors all of our music folks. All right, uh, now then our, our ushers, greeters, tech helpers, those that, uh, those that assist us with worship on Sunday morning, uh, invite you to stand. And then, and then finally, finally, at the security team, security teams, members of, of the committee or those that serve on the security team, invite you to stand. And then um, 
Finally, here, here, here's, the, here's the best thing of all. Here's something you may not know. Christians do not attend worship services. Christians do not attend worship services. Christians assist in worship. So when you come here on Sunday morning, you're assisting in worship. By singing, by praying, by being here, you're assisting in worship. And so if you assist in worship on Sunday morning, I invite you to stand. <laughs> if you assist in worship, on that, that everybody assists in worship, because we can't do it without you, or at least there wouldn't be a point, right? Um, so, so I want to recognize all of you. Give yourselves a hand. And then I want to pray for all of you, if I may. Uh, gracious God, I thank you so much for this church. I thank you for the wonderful people uh, that you've placed here. God, servants and leaders and doers and givers, faithful disciples, all of us. God, every single heart, every single soul here today is precious in your sight and in mine. God, I just thank you for them. Thank you for their service. Thank you for what they do for you, what they do for this church, and what they do for our community. God, we pray that you would turn a blessing on them in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Um, and now, along that same vein, um, as, as, the, as we as the staff were discussing this and putting this list together and figuring out how do we, how do we recognize folk, um, we started thinking about folk who uh, who just deserve special recognition, who just deserve special recognition, and um, people who just go above and beyond, who serve in multiple areas, often unnoticed. And uh, so what we decided to do, the staff, we decided to occasionally, how often is occasionally? We decided to, because we didn't want to trap ourselves into doing something, um, but we decided to occasionally uh, lift up a particular member of our church as sort of a leader or volunteer uh, for a special recognition. Um, and having said that, we've got some other names. We've got some other names going, and so we'll, we'll, we'll come to them as we, as we go down the road. And if you have names, please let us know. But uh, as we talk about doing this, the first name was obvious to all of us as a staff. And uh, that person is Morris Burrington. Yes. And just to hear everything that Morris does around the church, and again, this slide is not, neither inclusive nor exhaustive, uh, but uh, Morris had usher, uh, uh, coordinator of ushers, decorator of the sanctuary, including the pyramids, uh, filler of candles, and, and uh, uh, coordinator of symphonies and organ committee and communion steward, which is a big job nowadays, filling all those little cups. Uh, and just an all around wonderful servant in this church and in the larger community, um, which we don't even have time to get into that. But uh, Morris is, is a go-to guy for me uh, as far as anything that has to do with the sanctuary, anything that has to do with worship in here, flowers, pyramids, decorations, communion, all of that, ushering. Um, just a wonderful, wonderful servant, humble and, and capable in all that he does. And uh, so we have a, a key rate. This is the third time today he's gotten this. <laughs> but, uh, but we have a key rate for him, and he gets to keep it this time. And thank you, thank you. I'm going to pray with you. Gracious God, I thank you so much for Morris, and I thank you for his service, I thank you for his heart, I thank you for his dedication, I thank you for all that he does, I thank him for all that he does, and God, I pray that you would just bless him, and help him to know how much he's appreciated, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's give him a round of applause. And now I invite you to stand and join me in our opening prayer. <clears throat> Everlasting God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you have made us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until they rest in you. 
Give us purity of heart and strength of purpose, that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will. No weakness keep us from doing it, that in your life we may see light clearly, and in your service find your freedom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
And now with joy and thanksgiving, let us offer our gifts to God.
us pray. Almighty God, giver of every good and perfect gift, we give thanks to you for all the gifts that you have given to us. And now we offer, bless the giver, now we offer you these gifts in return. Bless the givers and the gifts and those who have not to give. Use our gifts and us to do your work in the world, to spread your gospel throughout the earth, and to bring glory to your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. chancel. Uh, we will read antiphonally. Uh, this side will read the bold, uh, the light type. That side will read the bold type. And I'll just read along with my side without the microphone on. So we won't have a leader. We'll just do it. So we'll give that a try. <laughs> Thank you. 
See what I mean about assisting worship? So, <clears throat> heard, a, heard a story about a, a, a class, a fire department went to this elementary school class for the little fire safety day. Anybody remember that? Fire safety day at elementary school. And so the firefighter got up and, and showed all the kids a smoke detector and they asked them if they knew what, what this was and they said smoke detector. And then the, the firefighter said, I pushed the button and he said, do you know what this sound means? And one little girl raised her hand, and it, she said, it means we're having pizza for dinner again. <laughs> of course, that means that somebody burned, burned the dinner and you got to order pizza. Of course, what, what does, what does the, the, the smoke detector actually mean? What is it supposed to mean? There's a fire, right? And, and what you're supposed to do when you hear a smoke detector go off, you're supposed to go find out why it's going off, right? That's not what you're supposed to do, but that's what everybody does, right? You go and look for the fire. You do, the, you do probably the least intelligent thing you could do at that moment. You go and look for the fire. Um, but but um, now, sometimes a smoke alarm gives off a false alarm when you burn the food. But, but be honest, wouldn't you rather have a false alarm every once in a while versus there not being an alarm when there should be? Wouldn't we prefer there being an alarm when there should be as opposed to there being a false alarm, right? Well, even though alarms are scary, because if you don't know what to do, you don't know why it's going off, it's scary. They're annoying and they go off at the wrong time. But in general, it's good that we have warnings, isn't it? This is children's service participation. Right? It's, yeah. it's yes. good that we have warnings. So Jesus gives us warnings. Jesus gives us warnings. He said, if, if you're going to follow me, it, it's not always going to be easy. It, sometimes it's going to be hard to follow me. And sometimes when you follow me, people won't like you. And in this broken world that we live in, sometimes bad things are going to happen. And so Jesus warns us about all of that. And he, but he also, along with the warnings, gives us a promise. He promises us that when those things do happen, he's going to help us and he's going to make it so that we can endure and get through all of those things. And so even though we, we don't like Jesus' warnings, we know that all of his warnings come with a promise and we can be thankful. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the warnings in our lives that keep us safe. And thank you for Jesus' warnings and for his promises. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I didn't say this is a long scripture for a, for a worship service. I understand that. But the sermon's not going to be very long. We're going to move rather quickly through the outline. So don't be intimidated by the, by the long reading. I know what you're all thinking when you got here. You're like, we got to go to lunch, right? Uh, but the reading is long for a worship service. Uh, but it, and actually, it only takes me about four minutes to get through. You can count about, you can count, you can do about uh, ten verses a minute. It, when you're reading scripture out loud. So in case you ever want to know, you can do about 10 verses a minute reading scripture out loud. Um, and so it's going to take about four minutes to read the scripture, and then the sermon will move rather quickly. So we will be out on time, all right? Or at least it will be my fault. <laughs> we'll be out. We have as much chance of being out on time as any other given Sunday. Let me put it that way. 
Our scripture reading this morning comes from John chapter 15, verse 26 through 16, 33. Listen to the word of God. Jesus said, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me, and you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. All this I have told you, so that you will not fall away. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who killed you will think they are offering a service to God. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when their time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you asks me, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But very truly, I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can see me no longer. And about, and about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. At this, some of his disciples said to one another, What does he mean, in a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? They kept asking, What does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I mean when I said, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world. So with you, now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Then Jesus' disciples said, now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things and that you do not even need to have anyone ask you questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you now believe, Jesus replied? A time is coming, and in fact has come, when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for my Father is with me. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The word of God for the people of God. Famous jazz drummer Buddy Rich was being admitted to a hospital where he would unfortunately uh, pass away. Uh, and as he was being admitted, the nurse asked him, 
is there anything you can't take? And he said, yeah, country music. <laughs> James Rogers, a convicted murderer who was preparing to be executed by firing squad, was asked if he had any last requests. He said, yeah, a bulletproof vest. Well, that's funny. <laughs> Bob Hope was asked by his wife before he died where he wanted to be buried. He said, surprise me. Our Lenten series is famous last words, Jesus' farewell discourse in the Gospel of John. And we're looking at John chapters 13 through 17, which are called the farewell discourse. Jesus' last body of teaching to his disciples uh, before his crucifixion. By the way, just as a preview of coming events, um, we're going, next week will be the last Sunday of this series. Uh, we're going to do something different for Palm Sunday. And then during Holy Week, um, for Holy Thursday, we're going to go back and do, uh, I should say do, we're going to go back and look at uh, John chapter 13, the beginning of the discourse. So we're going to finish it up with John chapter 17 next week. Go back to John chapter 13 on Holy Thursday. And then on Good Friday, our Good Friday service is going to be built around the seven last words of the cross. Um, so we're kind of continuing that theme throughout Lent and Holy Week. Uh, the thing about this, this real discourse is, is it, it is John's gospel. So uh, uh, John, John, the way he uses words, his sentence structures can just really hard to follow. Anybody see that? Right? It, 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 it's a struggle to read some of these passages. I don't know if you picked up on that. It's just because the sentences just really don't... Yeah, they're hard. They're hard sentences and they're hard to understand. But fortunately, fortunately, like any good preacher, like any good teacher, uh, Jesus is going to repeat himself. He's going to have several themes that he's going to repeat over the course of this this discourse, and so uh, this is more of a, of a review sermon, really. So we have noticed some themes repeat throughout the parallel discourse. Some things that Jesus says over and over again in different ways. First of all, Jesus predicts his crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. I'm going to die. I'm going to be handed over. I'm going to suffer. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to be buried, I'm going to rise again, I'm going to return to the Father. Those things are repeated over and over and over again throughout the discourse. His, his, his death and burial and resurrection and ascension are something that we see over and over again. Uh, the next thing we see over and over again is Jesus' promise that he will return. I'm going to the Father, but I'm coming back. I'm going to the Father, but I'm coming back. I'm coming back to get you. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm coming back to get you. you. In a little while, you won't see me, but then in a little while, you will see me. And so he's predicting his return to earth to establish his kingdom. In the meantime, Jesus commands us to demonstrate our love for him through obedience. If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus repeats that over and over again. You, we, 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 you, you love Jesus when you keep his commandments. That's how you love Jesus, is by keeping his commandments. It's not just a matter of warm feelings toward Jesus, positive regard about Jesus. It's obedience to Jesus that really is our love for him. Jesus promises to answer our prayers. Jesus promises to answer our prayers. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, the Father will do for you. Now, when we looked at this the first time, we, we understood that, first of all, that the qualification is that, that there's some things we can't ask for in Jesus' name. There's some things that we can't ask for in Jesus' name. There's some things that we can't sign Jesus' name to, right? Harming others, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but, but there's also maybe another thing we, we need to understand is that um, it's also a matter of God's timing. Jesus promises to answer all of our prayers in his name, in his way, in his time. Uh, so let me tell you this. Uh, I, I've been a pastor for almost 20 years. And in 20 years, I've prayed for people's health and healing uh, from from 
comfort from the everyday aches and pains of life all the way up to terminal illness. Right? I prayed for lots of people over that time. And I'll tell you this, as I stand here I can tell you that every single prayer I prayed for healing was answered. Every single prayer I prayed for healing was answered, but you gotta understand for the Christian facing terminal illness, death is healing. Death is healing because death is the last enemy to be defeated. Right? And, and, and a good death may be the greatest healing of all. So Jesus answers all of our prayers, but he answers them in his way, in his time. Jesus promises us the comfort, power, and guidance of the Holy Spirit. That, that should be the one that just pops out at you, that, that Jesus is sending the Holy Spirit to us to be with us in his absence. And that Holy Spirit is going to enter into us. And that Holy Spirit is going to speak within our hearts. And he's going to be our conscience. Not Jimmy Cricket, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our conscience. The Holy Spirit is that voice within us that tells us that we're going the wrong way, that we're doing the wrong thing. And of course, we can ignore it, just like we can ignore any of the other warnings that Jesus is giving us. Just like we can ignore the smoke detector or the tornado warning. We can ignore it, but it is there. It is there to guide us and lead us and comfort us and give us strength. The Holy Spirit is the great teacher of the church. By the way, Jesus said right here, because well, a lot of people like to talk about what Jesus didn't say. Well, Jesus said, I didn't say a lot of things. I didn't have time. I was only here for three years, right, in, in public ministry. There's a lot of things I didn't get to. But guess what? I left some apostles. And I gave those apostles the Holy Spirit. They're going to finish the New Testament. Paul teaches with the authority of Jesus. Peter teaches with the authority of Jesus. James teaches with the authority of Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And so the church teaches today through that same power. And finally, Jesus warns us about coming trouble and persecution. We, we, we need to just understand that if we're really going to follow Jesus, some people aren't going to like us. I don't know about you, but I gave up on everybody liking me probably the second day of kindergarten. Right? I gave up on everybody liking me the second day of kindergarten. I gave up on a lot of people liking me the second day of ministry. I just realized that people aren't going to like me. There's going to be some people that aren't going to like me for any number of reasons. There are going to be some people that don't accept me. Some people that don't approve of me. Uh, religion beside the point, but then you add, you add Jesus into the mix and you understand that we're going to make some enemies. And what are we supposed to do to our enemies? Love them. So, right, they're going to hate us. We've got to love them. It's a, it's a bad deal, folks. I'm sorry. What can I say? But, but Jesus wants to warn us because Jesus wants us to know and Jesus wants us to be prepared. And, and in the face of that, those warnings build our faith. I'll tell you about that in a second. But, but you know, I, I think one of the problems is we, we, we don't want to hear the warnings because we get tired of hearing warnings. I don't know about you, but I, 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 feel, like, I feel like, especially in the last two years or so, and even beyond that, even before that, our, our culture is just a high alert culture. Right? Our culture is just warning, warning, danger, danger, you know. Danger, Will Smith, warning. <laughs> now I'm showing my age. Um, uh, we're just constantly keyed up. And, and then we feel like, gosh, we just can't take any more. We just want to shut the alarms off. We just want to uh, uh, muffle them out. Because uh, we're, just, we're, just, we're just so, so keyed up. That's the world in which we live, a world of constant warnings. But we need the warnings, right? Even as, even as annoying as they are, as annoying as the smoke detector that goes off when all we're trying to do is cook, right? Trying to cook, right? Um, <laughs> Added insult to injury, like, yeah, yeah, I know, I already burned it, I'm standing right here. I don't need you to tell me. 
But the word, I tell you, what's, what's worse than that is, is, is the, the battery thing. The battery thing on the smoke detectors. Three o'clock in the morning, laying in bed. Beep. Beep. So then you get up, because you're not going to sleep through that, right? Don't know why, but yeah, you get up. And so you got to find out which smoke detector it is. And so you go over here. And you wait for the beep. And it takes a long time. Beep. Beep. Right, and you do that for like 15 minutes until you finally find the smoke detector. You know, now, you're going to take the thing down. You're not going to change the battery in the middle of the night, but man, that'll wake you up. Right? But truth be told, we'd rather be warned than not warned. Turn the warnings in the same way. I remember when I was a kid, what, what did the tornado sirens mean when, 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 I, when I was a kid? It meant that somebody saw a tornado, right? To have a tornado warning, somebody had to see the thing, right? It is coming. And, and you know, you had however long you had. Now, they've kind of walked that back a little bit. I don't know if any of you know that. They've kind of walked that back with tornado warnings a little bit. You don't have to actually see one to have a tornado warning. But of course, now we get earlier warnings, but of course, now what does that mean? We just ignore them more, don't we? We get, we get earlier warnings, but we just ignore them all the more. But truth be told, we should be thankful for warnings. We shouldn't be mad at warnings. We should be thankful for warnings, and the same applies to Jesus. Because we don't want it to happen. We don't want a house fire, we don't want a tornado. But if we're gonna have one, it's better to know than not know. It's what Jesus tells us. It's what Jesus warns us. Jesus warns us about these troubles to come so that we will not fall away and so that we will have hope. Well, how do warnings of bad news give us hope? How, how, how can warnings give us hope? Well, here's why. We can have faith and hope because if Jesus' warnings come true, so will his promises. If Jesus' warnings come true, so will his promises. So let me tell you, what does the Bible say? There'll be wars and rumors of wars. There'll be plagues. There'll be, there'll be pestilences. There'll be earthquakes. There'll be, you fill in the blank. Those things are going to happen and going to continue to happen. Now, am I making an end time statement? I don't think so, not really, because, you know, the world just kind of keeps on going on. One day, one day the, the game will be over, right? I'm not trying to tell you uh, that, that, that when that's going to happen. That's not my job. We're closer today than we were yesterday, obviously. But, but understand that when you read the Bible carefully, you realize that we live in exactly the world the Bible says we would live in. We live in exactly the world the Bible said would exist. We live in exactly the world the Bible predicted, exactly the world the Bible described. We're right here, right now. And if we can believe that, because we can see it, then we can believe the next thing. We can believe the promise of a world beyond of a new heaven and a new earth, of a perfect kingdom. We can believe that because we believe what the Bible says about now. We can believe the, what the Bible says about then because we believe Jesus, because we can see Jesus' warnings come true. We can put our faith in his promises. The promises that we will endure. The promises that he will give us strength in the moment to stand up to whatever we need to stand up to. The promise that one day he is going to make all things new. If we can trust the warnings we can trust the promises, and therefore, we have hope. You see, no matter what we face in this world, we have the promise of the power of the Holy Spirit. We have the promise of the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives to get us through whatever's coming, and we have the promise of a new creation one day waiting for us. And with those two things in mind, we can endure anything. We have peace, we have hope today, because Jesus says to us, you've been warned. Let us pray.
Dear God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the warnings and promises that it brings us. God, we pray that you would help us to heed the warnings and help us to hold tight to the promises. Give us faith. Give us hope. Give us the endurance that you promise us. And help us to look forward to the restoration of all things in your kingdom. God, we pray for our church. We pray that you bless us and help us to grow and prosper. Help us to worship and serve you in spirit and in truth and serve the world in your name. God, we pray for the whole body of Christ throughout the world. We pray for the persecuted church. We pray for the United Methodist Church for this annual conference and our bishop boy in this district and our superintendent governor. We pray for our community, our nation, our world in these troubled times. We pray for all the people and places who are in need throughout the world today. And God, we especially lift up Ukraine today and we pray for peace. We pray for men and women who serve us at home and abroad. We pray for our world leaders at every level. We pray for ourselves, our families, our church, our community, our nation, and the whole world for blessings of peace, justice, health, safety, freedom, stability, prosperity, and holiness. And now, O oh God, we pray that you hear the prayers of each and every heart that's worshiping with us today, either here in person or online, as we lift up our prayers to you, either silently or aloud, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Loving God, you've heard our prayers here this morning, and you hear the prayers that remain silent in our hearts. Oh God, you know our every need, and when we do not know how to pray, your spirit intercedes for us with groanings that are too deep for words. And God, we pray that you hear us now as we lift our voices together in the prayer which our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite you to stand together as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Receive this benediction. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, and may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you now and remain with you always. Let us go into the world to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Experience and grace, exploring truth, expressing love. Amen.